Hi, I'm Carol Case from The Modal Shop in Cincinnati, Ohio. I spent a few weeks this summer at Eagles Nest Lake in the North Woods of Minnesota and I brought along this Sound Advisor 831C sound level meter. My family has been going to the same spot since the 1940s and a lot has changed over the years, but one thing that's stayed consistent is the call of the loon. Loons are beautiful birds that have a very unique sound that you probably would recognize because it's often used to set the scene in lake scenes, uh, in movies, and they call all through the day and overnight as well. So at the modal shop, we rent all kinds of sound and vibration measurement and monitoring equipment, including this class one sound level meter, which is made by our sister company, Larson Davis. And I thought it might be fun to use the meter to learn a little bit more about the loon calls, and then in turn to teach about one of the most useful features of the meter, which is dynamic triggering. So dynamic triggering allows you to make a sound recording when the sound level reaches a user-specified number of decibels above the background noise. And why would I want to use dynamic triggering in this application? Well, I'm just really interested in getting some clear recordings of the loon calls. And so on a night when the wind was still and there's no water lapping at the shoreline, I could probably hear loon calls from several lakes away. They might be very, very quiet and very low decibel. Uh, on a night when there's a lot of noise, a lot of wind, a lot of background noise, maybe the waves are crashing, I'm only going to be able to hear those calls very clearly that are very close to me and much louder. So dynamic triggering will let me handle that situation. It will let me make a sound recording whenever the sound reaches a decibel level above background noise. Now I've opened up my data file for my overnight run. One of the first things that I notice is that there were 147 events overnight. As I look through the data and listen to the sound recordings, I'll get a better idea of what those were. I can see that things were fairly quiet overnight and right around sunrise, the background noise steadily picked up. That certainly fits with my experience of the weather getting a little bit windy around that time and me being awakened by the cacophony of crows and squirrels and other wildlife in the early morning hours with the cabin windows open. So let's take a look at the event history tab where you can see that my trigger level did indeed start a little bit higher and then get lower as the night went on. And then again in the morning as it got a little bit noisier, my trigger level started to go back up again, which is what I would expect. Uh, I had set the dynamic trigger to take into account background noise and trigger at 10 decibels above background noise. So let's go back and look at our summary tab and I'm going to pull down here, readjust the view and you can see that we have our one third octave band data displayed as a heat map or spectrogram where the amplitude is indica indicated by color. So now I'm going to zoom in to the early part of my data. So I just click on this zoom button and I just select a little bit of data there. Uh, right off the bat, I know that my first few events happened while I was setting up the meter. It's my footfalls as I walk around, a door shutting, things like that. So I'm going to go up here and create an edit band and just remove those events. So I just say exclude data and OK. Now I know I can ignore those. Those are not loon calls. Those are not something I'm interested in. Let's go over here and you'll notice in the new G4 I can actually listen to my sound recordings right from my graph. So I have my overall timeline and uh, you can see right here the area that I zoomed into. So I can always see that overall timeline and this is just the zoomed in area and here's my event number eight. As I listen to that you'll hear that that is, in fact, a loon. Now, when I go over here and listen to event nine, that is actually the sound of the water pump pumping water up into the cabin. Every time somebody turns water on, that's gonna go off. And what's interesting is these next two events are the same thing. And I can tell just by looking at them after I've listened to event 10 and know that it's the water pump. Um, every time I see an event that looks like that, it's, it's going to be the same thing. So I'm going to exclude these three items of data 
or those three sound recordings as well. Now, we can pan by either taking this little band right here on our overall timeline and moving it over, or we can do so by clicking this button right here and just sliding back and forth. So I want to listen to these events right here. So let me zoom in a little bit more. 14 is a loon. In fact, probably a couple of them. And 15 is one as well. So actually all these events, 14 through 17, are loons and I'm interested in hearing them. And it turns out if I had made my continuation period a little bit longer in my setup, say closer to 10 seconds, these would have been all lumped together in one sound recording. And I probably would choose to do that if I ran the measurement again and I'd have less individual sound recordings. Um, so a little bit less to keep track of, but it's all about how you want to look at and listen to the data. So I'll continue to sort through the data and mark the events that I'm interested in and the events that I'm not interested in. But as you can see, we do need to sort through our data a little bit, but G4 gives us an easy way to examine our dynamically triggered noise events and to correlate sound recordings with data. So if you'd like to learn more about the Sound Advisor Model 831C sound level meter or more about dynamic triggering, please visit Larson Davis's website. If you'd like to learn about rental options, please visit our website at the Modal Shop.